Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. If you've seen ads for and wondered about a food subscription box, well, this is the video for you. We're going to unbox our Blue Apron box from this week and cook a meal together. But first, you're watching Fun to Know with Carol. I'm Carol, here with quick weekly videos that help interesting people like you connect with their curiosity. Now, on with the show. Here's our box for the week. This is three meals for two people. Comes weekly, but you can skip weeks if you need to. On the top of the box are the recipe cards, which we'll go into in a minute. But then you open up the insulated bag and it's full of the fresh produce and protein. Each item is individually wrapped, but there are instructions on the website for how to recycle the packaging. We have scallions and broccoli and green beans, red bell pepper, tomatoes, and then some bags of knickknacks. Each recipe has a bag of knickknacks. These are the small things that are going to be used in each meal. So there will be three bags of knickknacks in your box. Some things need to be refrigerated, some things don't, like a bulb of garlic doesn't need to be refrigerated, but most items will. And then underneath a layer of cardboard, you see the ice blocks. These also are recyclable and instructions are given for that. Because we're pescatarians, we're going to see seafood in our box, but this is where your protein is wedged beneath the ice blocks. Here's the second ice block, and then the rest of the box can go into the recycle. Then you have the three recipe cards with a full color picture on the front and the instructions on the back. Well, it's Blue Apron Cooking Day. And uh, what we're going to be cooking today is togarashi shrimp and vegetable fried rice. So it says on the recipe that this is going to take 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, but this is not a 35 to 40 minute video. So obviously we're going to be speeding it up along the way, but I'm at each juncture, I'm going to show you where we are in the steps. The first thing that I do, and you might wonder why a hole puncher is one of my tools. The first thing I do is punch a hole at the top of my recipe card. The picture is on the front and then all the steps are on the back. And the reason I do that is because I take the recipe card then and hang it up above my stove so that I can see it for all the steps. Now, the steps usually start out with the thing that you need to do fastest, the thing you need to get started with first, whether it's preheat the oven for the roasted vegetables or put the pan on for the rice or the barley or whatever it is. So we're going to start with step number one, which is getting the rice started. Now the next step is always to prepare your produce and fresh ingredients. And there's always the instruction to wash and dry the fresh produce first. The produce is all washed and ready, so now it's time to medium dice the red bell pepper and cut into one inch pieces the green beans that have been topped top and bottom. So that's all there is to that. Then we'll get ready to peel and chop the garlic. Easiest way to peel is just to smash on the cutting board and then we'll finally chop the garlic. Two cloves. So the next step is to peel the ginger. It was in the knickknack bag and uh, they will give you a little piece like this so that you don't have to have a big piece with a lot of it going to waste. Now, you've probably heard the tip that you can peel it with a, the edge of a spoon. That tip never quite made any sense to me. I think, why not just use a peeler? You know, you can use a spoon to peel potatoes too, but you, you wouldn't think of doing that. So I just use a potato peeler to peel it. And I, I don't think it uh, takes off more than it needs to. Uh, we'll just go around with a potato peeler. Maybe it's because it's so knobby, um, but you know, so are potatoes. <laughs> so just do the best you can. Here we are with our peeled piece of ginger real time. 
So our instructions say to peel it and then finally chop it until you have two teaspoons. So we've put the garlic into another dish and we'll take the ginger and finally chop it until we have about two teaspoons. This is actually a tablespoon, which is three teaspoons, but we're big on ginger in this family, so we'll leave it at three teaspoons. Now, you can save the rest of this ginger, put it in drinks or whatever you'd like to, don't let it go to waste. The last vegetable we're gonna deal with are the scallions. You're simply going to take the root end off and then slice up the tops and bottoms, keeping them separate. Now we're going to take one egg, which comes in a protective case. We're going to crack it into a bowl and then season it with a little bit of salt and pepper and then lightly beat it, just with a fork. It doesn't need to get foamy or anything like that. Just lightly beat it. Now we'll get to cooking. The next step is to heat up some olive oil in a pan and you're going to add the first two veggies, the red bell pepper and the green beans. You're gonna season them with salt and pepper and cook them for about two to three minutes until they're slightly softened. Then you'll add the ginger, garlic, and the bottoms of the scallions. This is when your kitchen starts to smell yummy. The ginger, the garlic, and the scallions, those are called the aromatics, and uh, they really do add a lot of flavor, but we haven't had much spice yet. Uh, there's just salt and pepper that we've added so far, but don't worry, um, the dinner always comes with some kind of either a spice blend or a, a series of spices that you're going to add to the dish. One of the reasons for using a large pan is because you're going to move the veggies to one side, add some oil to the other, and add your lightly beaten egg. You'll scramble that just slightly before you mix the veggies and the egg together. That then is going to be the base for your fried rice. You're going to take it from the pan and move it over into a bowl, which you'll then be able to wipe out the pan with cover the bowl with some aluminum foil. Here's a tip. Aluminum foil and parchment paper, get them at the dollar store. There's no need to spend a lot of money on those two tools. Now let's get to our shrimp. The shrimp needs to be cleaned and patted dry. By clean, I simply mean take the tails off if that's the way you like to enjoy them. You never want to rinse fish or seafood and shrimp is no exception. Pat them dry simply by placing them on a paper towel, covering them up and literally patting them. Then you're going to take them and put them in a bowl and season them with the dry seasoning that came in the knickknack bag. You'll add some oil to the pan that you've gotten hot with the veggies and then you're going to add your shrimp. So we'll let them sit for two to three minutes which will brown them on one side. Now we're going to add half the soy sauce, and there isn't much here to begin with, so I just kind of put my finger where half would be and eyeball it. Since we're talking about a, oh, that's perfect here. Since we're talking about a warm pan, be careful because it may splatter. And then you're going to turn the shrimp over and complete the cooking. One to two minutes. Look at how nice and caramelized they are on the one side. It won't take long for them to absorb some of that soy sauce. And you can stir them occasionally. Once the shrimp is done, you're going to transfer it to a plate because you're going to use this pan one final time. In this pan, we're going to heat the sesame oil. Just snip off the corner and add the sesame oil and one tablespoon of olive oil. We're going to add the cooked rice in an even layer. And we'll let it cook for three to four minutes. What's happening here is that the rice is getting a little bit crispy and we are going to add that to our vegetables and egg. Now, the instructions say to add the rice to the bowl of vegetable and egg, but I obviously did not put this in a big enough bowl. So I have found that it works just fine 
to add the vegetables to the rice rather than the rice to the vegetables. And you just turn off the heat so that it doesn't continue to cook and that works just fine. So we're adding the vegetables and egg to, to the rice, giving it a slight stir to combine. And then the only other remaining ingredients that we haven't used are the other half of the soy sauce and some vinegar. So there is a little bottle of rice vinegar as well. So we will sprinkle that on. And what I've found is the way the recipes are written, for the most part, you use whatever they say to, to use, unless you find that your uh, palate just can't handle something. So if it's, uh, if it's a spicy, we've discovered that about half of the spice is fine for us when it's supposed to be a hot, you know, like a Mexican meal or something, about half is just fine. But on other things like this, where it's soy sauce and vinegar, don't, don't think, oh, vinegar in eggs and rice, you know, just put it in and you'll, you will be surprised at uh, how delicious it is. All right, we are going to take this over to our serving station and plate it up and show you the finished results. All right, we'll put on our shrimp on each plate. You can count out the shrimp to make sure it's absolutely equal because you want to be fair in something like this. And then the sliced scallion tops as a garnish. And then they've given us cashews as well for a garnish. I hope you've enjoyed the unboxing and cooking of our Blue Apron shrimp dish. Please join me again next week when I'll be here with a completely different topic. Just know that I do appreciate you and your desire to learn something new. Thanks for watching and have a great week ahead.